Hello everyone, this is Kenneth Bruni and welcome back. So this is going to be our second lab as far as this order is concerned or perhaps maybe chapter 2 of our lab tutorials. So this is for SN207 Programming for Engineers. So this is just some bit of descriptive notes. You can see that everything we have over here is a comment. So definitely when we run this, nothing is going to print out or nothing is going to happen. So a variable, and I'm reading from line one, a variable is a placeholder for storing data in the computer memory. Now, over the past few times, what you've seen me do is to type in, for instance, print, and I have in my name over here. So you can see that I'll do something like this. And now when I run it, you definitely see that I have Kenneth showing up over here. So now, what if there's a better way of doing this? And I'm saying better because we can use variables to accomplish the same thing. So over here on top of it, remember the order of execution. The first line of code gets executed first before the second line. So if I want to declare a variable, which I'm going to do, I need to declare it on top of the print because that variable will be stored in the computer memory. Then this logic print whatever thing will be executed and this is what i mean so we are going to have name and name is equal to and i'll put in kenneth over here now in some programming languages you have to end this with a semicolon as far as python is concerned you don't have to worry about semicolons and clearly if you put semicolon over here it kind of gives you a hint that well you may not uh, currently python accepts some of these things but then it is best you don't put semicolons at the end of whatever declaration you do. So what you've done over here on line two is we declaring a variable. And this is similar to anything you have done in algebra. So for instance, you are given a word problem. Kojo is twice Amma's age. If Amma is 20 years old, how old is Kojo? Then you'll be like, let X represent Kojo's age and you do that mathematical computation. It's the same thing you are doing over here. So you are saying that let name equals Kenneth in terms of trying to read it in algebra language but then in Python we simply write name is equal to Kenneth and now name is a variable so now let's get back or let's try and link this with the definition we have over here and we are saying that a variable is a placeholder for storing data in the computer memory so this is that data which is Kenneth that we are storing in the variable name and in order to make this work or in order to print this we just have to clear this and instead of printing out Kenneth we now want to print out name because name is a new variable now I'm going to clear this and now when I run this we still get Kenneth over here now if I put in Bruni over here this Kenneth Bruni is now saved in the variable name and now when I print name we definitely get Kenneth Bruni over here so now this is looking good now let's look at some few interesting things over here and starting from line five we have this note over here so i'm saying that there are some variable naming rules or naming conventions we need to understand or we need to learn when naming variables now this is not um limited to python i think almost every programming language will kind of have some of these rules apply to them so now let's look at the first one the first one is we need to use descriptive names for our variable names. So for instance, name equal to Kenneth Brony is quite descriptive. And let me just scroll this down a little bit and now try and give a perfect example of using descriptive names. So for instance, if we do something like school is equal to and we type in University of Ghana. School, University of Ghana is very descriptive and now you can see that when i hover around this it tells me that this is a variable the school that we have declared this way is a variable and it says variable school and the literal university of ghana don't worry we are later on going to understand what these literals are but these are some of the advantages you get when using vs code because you get a lot of help this way good now the next one we have over here online i mean the second point is we cannot use white spaces and hyphens in our names so a typical example is we cannot see something like first name is equal to kenneth 
And in between first and name, you could see that there's a space over here. That's what we refer to as white space. So we cannot use, let me put this down a little bit. We cannot use white spaces in our names. And also we cannot use hyphen. So maybe somebody was thinking, okay, if you cannot use white name, white spaces, let's do first dash name. And also this is not allowed. Now clearly you could see that the moment we type in something which is um, not good enough, Python doesn't understand it. I mean, automatically prompts us. And you can see that this has been underlined. Now, the way Python is trying to evaluate this piece of logic we have over here is that it doesn't look at this as a variable anymore, but then it is looking at this as first minus name. And we cannot actually compute first minus name. So definitely Python or our computer is yelling at us that, well, there's a problem over here. So you see this red underlining over here and everything over here shows up that it is red so currently when you hover around this it tells you that uh, there's a problem okay and i'll just leave this and you can read this okay the last thing you see over here is one problem in this file so currently there's a problem so we cannot use white spaces and we cannot use hyphens but then we can use underscore so in instances like this i can do something like first underscore name and i'll assign it to kenneth and i can do something like last underscore name and assign it to Bruni. All right. Now, the fourth one or the fourth point we have over here as far as our naming convention goes is we can use camel case notation. So camel case notation will now look like this. And for this one, let me say something like full name. So full name is now going to be called to Kenneth Bruni like this. So what is so special about this? Now, you see that, I mean, the back of a camel. And let me show you this over here. So let's get into our browser and let me type in camel case notation. All right. So you see that, I mean, this picture um, exemplifies it very well. So you see the back of a camel, okay. So it goes very small, then it goes up when it gets to the is it the hump or the hunch or whatever they call it then it also comes down okay so that's a camel case notation so basically all that you are trying to implement over here is when you have something like two words which you can combine as a variable name then the first letter of the first word will use a small case or a lower case then the first letter of the second word we use a capital case and these are quite generic um most programmers use this camel case notations others also prefer uh, what you have over here as using the underscores but then i'll just advise that just stick to one and be consistent okay don't be using underscores at some point and later when you come and use camel case notation you get confused along the way so just stick to one that you are comfortable with and you are good to go now the fifth point we have over here is we cannot start um, with a number, okay, but can have a number in it. So, for instance, let's say we have something like this. We cannot do something like first number is equal to 90. Now, this is not going to work because clearly when I hover around this, it says statement must be separated with new lines or whatever. Now, clearly you could see that there's a problem over here and we cannot start with a number. So instead of saying first number like this, we can do something like, um, we can actually use, for instance, maybe camel case notation and say first number if that's exactly what you want to see. Or better still, we can do something like this, number one. So we can have a number in it, but it shouldn't be at the beginning. So the number can be at the end or it can be anywhere in between whatever thing we have over here. So we can have something like num1 bar. In fact, I'm struggling to uh, pronounce this. And this is going to be okay. But then this will basically defeat uh, some of the naming conventions we have over here as in using something descriptive. This, I don't think is descriptive enough. But then if you are to do something like number one, at least anybody can read this as number one and you are looking good over here. Now, the set point we have over here is we cannot use reserved keywords. So the question is, what are these reserved keywords? And for this one, let me just highlight everything over here. Or I can, I mean, as well leave it because I'm not printing anything. 
So these reserve keywords are some words Python has reserved and Python uses those words in its language construct. Okay. Now I can show you all the reserve keywords and in order to do that, let me just um, also comment these ones out and come to the very top. Now, by doing this, we are just jumping ahead of our time, but then don't worry. I just want to show you the reserve keywords so that you see that, okay, these are reserve keywords. But clearly, there's a common sense way of knowing that this is a reserve keyword, so we are not going to use it. So I'm going to say from, from keyword, I'm going to import KW list. So that's like keyword list. And I'm now going to print KW list over here. So I'll save this. Don't worry about the things you are seeing over here okay i mean they may look confusing but then i just want to show you the keywords later on you are going to see why we are doing from and important things of that sort so these are the reserved keyword list and it is reserved because python has taken it out so we cannot use it in our variable names now that's not to say we cannot use keywords we are definitely going to use keywords but then we cannot use it in our variable names so clearly let me come down here and over here give some few examples so for instance you cannot use false clearly you can see that false is colored in a certain way and that's simply because it's a keyword you cannot use class class also has the same color you cannot use none we cannot use true and so on and so forth so these are reserve key and these are the ones listed over here so we have false we have class we have none we have true and things of that sort and clearly i don't think any of the names over here um, if we are to follow religiously the kind of naming conventions we have, we may not need to use keywords as our variable names. But like I said, we are definitely going to use keywords, but not our variable names. So I'll comment this one out and everything is looking good. Now, the last thing we have over here is Python is case sensitive. Okay. So for instance, if I type in false, let me type in false properly. If I type in false, this false, and if I type in another false, they are the same, okay? Because they are all false. But then if I type in false, as in small letter F, Python is case sensitive. And for which reason? You can see that these two were colored because they are all reserved keywords. But then this is not colored because it is not what it looks like as we have it over here. So Python is case sensitive. So by so doing, if, for instance, we have two variables, and the first one is age. So age is 90. And we have small letter age. And another small letter age is 20. As far as Python is concerned, in as much as grammatically, both of them, as in what we have online, 25 and 26, are both ages. But then Python sees them differently because we have two different names. Okay. Or we have the same name, but then because of the case sensitivity of Python, they are considered different as we have it over here. So this with variables. Now there's one last thing I need to do over here and we are going to end this video. So it's going to be the multiple assignments or unpacking in some instances. So let's say we have X is equal to 10. Okay. And we have Y is equal to 20. And let's say we have Z is equal to 30. All right. Now what we have online 30, 31, and 32, as far as these variable declarations are, we can, and of course, let me just save this and try and print this out to show you. So let's say we print X, and let me come up here and come and comment this one out so that you don't print the keyword list over here too. So once again, let me just clear this. And now if I run this, we have because we are printing x and x is 10 if we decide to print y and save this you see that we have 20 over here now what we have over here in terms of line 30 31 and 32 you could have done this this way so you can do x comma y comma z and once again let me just comment these ones out so that we don't get confused so we have x comma y comma z is equal to 10 comma 20 30. Now, when I save this, we don't seem to have any problem over here. And now, when I run this, we still get y is equal to 20 over here. Now, if I'm to print z and run this, we get z 
showing up as 30 over here. So now this is what is going to happen. Now, assuming we have three variables to our left, okay, and then two values to our right, there's some kind of um, misproportion over here. So currently, when I print out Z, it tells me that value error, not enough values to unpack. Expected three got two. I think this error message is making sense over here. Let me read that again. Not enough values to unpack. Expected three got two. So we can clearly see that over here. That's the values over here were not enough to unpack. It was expecting three, but go to. It was expecting three because we had three variables over here. And it doesn't really matter if we are printing out Z. We could have printed out X because in terms of what you have over here, at least we can see that X is assigned to 10. But then when you run this, we still have this value error showing up over here. And that's because of the disproportion we have with the variable number and the values number. So we then need to make sure that we have the same number of variables as the same number of values. So everything is looking good. Now, what about we have more values than more variables? So in this case, we have four values, but then three variables. And now when I run this, once again, there's a value error. And this one, it says too many values to unpack, expected three. So clearly you can see that there were too many values to unpack. And it was expecting just three because you have three variables. So let me come back and now we have equal proportion. But then the whole point is, as far as this logic is concerned, what we have on line 33, the first variable is going to be assigned to the first value at the other end of the um, equal to sign. The second variable is going to be assigned to the second value. The third variable is going to be assigned to the third value over here. Good. Now there are some um, techniques and few exceptions over here. Now let me show you this. So let's say we have x comma y is equal to this as we see it over here. Now, what is going to happen when I run this? We are definitely going to catch an error. And the error says too much values or too many values to unpack. It was expecting two, but now we are getting three. Now, there's something we can do. We can actually put a star over here. Okay. So star before y. And please, there's no space. Okay. So star before y. And now when I do this and run this, we don't seem to get that error. And that's simply because of the star that we have done over here. So basically, all that we are trying to do is, whenever you put up this star over here, all that we are trying to say is, the first value will be assigned to this value over here. And this, because we have a star over here, should take all the other values that we have. So when I run this, we don't have a problem. So clearly, when I run, or when I'm trying to print out Y, we get something interesting over here. So we get something in a square bracket, 20, 50. Now this square bracket thing we have over here is what we refer to as a list. Later on, we are going to um, go into list and I think that's going to be in chapter 12. So don't worry, we are going to get there. So everything we have over here will be unpacked into a list if you put this. Now in that same way, as you mean I bring the star in front of X, then clearly, because y is the last variable over here, y will be assigned to the last value and 10 and 20 will now be bundled together as a list and it will be assigned to the variable x. So now let's see, if I'm printing out y as we have it this way, y is now going to be 50 and if I decide to print x, x is now going to be that list 10, 20 because we are unpacking this into this. So this is looking good. All right, so this is going to be the end of this video. Gradually, I think you are learning some interesting things over here. And like I said, we'll be building on this knowledge chapter by chapter. And whenever you have any question, try and do a Google search of your own. Try and see if you can find answers. If you don't find answers, you just write these questions down. When we come to class, we can discuss. You can also discuss with your friends on your um, WhatsApp groups and stuff like that. But please make sure you follow along. You type everything you see over here because there's not just videos for you to go and watch and be sleeping and be eating and watching. No. Type everything you see over here. Practice. Use your own examples after the examples we have over here. And I think you are going to grab it gradually. Thank you very much and catch you in the next video.